Hey, today I'm making a video where I compare the three cameras, uh, the three flagship Olympus cameras from the Evolt series, the E1, E3, and E5. Let's get to it. What I have here is the three flagships, E1, E3, and E5. Hmm. Now they look, the E3 looks smaller because there's no vertical grip on it. Um, although the, um, the vertical grip from the E5 is interchangeable with the E3. But just so you get a better sense of their size without the vertical grips, I'm going to remove them on all three cameras and uh, film them a bit that way. So here we go. No vertical grip. <laughs> so E1, E3, and E5. <laughs> There we go. Let's start a bit with the E1. Let's talk about it for a sec. Now you can see right away one of the big differences is the design of the front of the camera here. You've got the shutter button which is encased in the sort of a plastic bezel and uh, the front uh, control or dial is completely separate and exposed whereas on the E3 and on the E5 you have them embedded into the grip right, right here. Um, you also have this indentation on the E3 and on the E5 which uh, was not on the E1. Let's see. All of them have a ton of buttons. Now on the E1 what we have here on the side, of course, is the, um, the card bay. And I'm going to open that up for you. So it's just a single card bay for a compact flash card, but very sturdily made. Even the door, I mean, these are some heavy duty latches on there. And it does have a mode dial, which is something that was uh, done away with on the E5 and the E3. They do not have a mode dial. You switch the mode by pressing on, there's a button here called mode, right there in the middle. And then you press, I believe, either the front or the back. Uh, you rotate the front or the back uh, control wheel to change the mode on them. Can't say it's better or worse, it's just interesting and it's different. I particularly don't change that mode all that often. I shoot an aperture priority pretty much 90% of the time or even 95% of the time. I switch to shutter priority when I, when I need to make sure I have a certain shutter speed. Perhaps I need to slow the camera down, you know, drag the shutter. Or I need to make sure I have a high enough shutter speed when I'm shooting with telephoto lenses so that I don't uh, blur them, um, blur the photos. Um, just to make sure that uh, they come out as crisp as possible. Now, yeah, and then I may switch to manual mode if I'm in a studio uh, doing some work. And that's that. So pretty much aperture priority most of the time. Yeah. It's a wonderful little camera, the C1. Very capable for its day. And I'm so thrilled with the photos that I get from it. I really am. I barely use the screen. Um, I just take photos and I know they'll come out great. Uh, this one, as opposed to uh, the E3 and the E5, uh, the E1 has a CCD sensor developed uh, with Kodak. And it's a wonderful, wonderful sensor. And um, if you've been looking at my website or um, the various profiles that I maintain, one at Flickr, one at the My Olympus website, and uh, I even post photos on Twitter. But um, if you've been looking at the photos, most of the photos I've posted lately were taken with the E1. 
And I just love it. And it's so easy to forget that this camera only gives you five megapixels of resolution. That's it, just five megapixels. And it's really, it's plenty. Uh, because the photos come out so beautiful, the colors are just perfect, uh, they're sharp, they're just wonderful. So I really don't find myself missing the higher resolution. It's nice to have higher resolution like the, the 10 pixels for the E3 or the 12 pixels for the E5. Uh, and it's certainly there, there are situations when you want higher resolution, it'd be nice to have it, but I love this camera. I'm so glad that I got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's rotate it a bit more. That's the side of it here. And uh, it's got a few ports. There we go. So it's got, uh, it's got a FireWire port, believe it or not. And then a USB port and uh, a video out port. Uh, just an analog video output. Probably just outputs the display if you want to control it perhaps or see it a little better. Yeah. But it does not have live view. So I should specify this camera does not have live view. This came out in 2003 for goodness sake. So, yeah. Yeah. But it does have, interestingly enough, a DC port here which can be used to power the camera in case the battery conks out. Um, the battery, by the way, is amazing. Um, I love the battery for this camera. I um, Let me just... Uh, so this is the vertical grip for it. And is the camera going to focus on it or not? Come on, focus on the grip. There we go. See, that's the vertical grip for it. Lovely. And... Uh, very well thought out really and the battery comes out of here and it's a single battery this is the way I got the camera you see come on focus focus fo there we go so it's a single battery and it lasts so long I think I took over 1500 photos maybe even over 1800 photos with a single charge so I'm not complaining at all very good battery life Focus, focus, be a good, good little camera and focus. There we go. All right, so I love that this one has a manual switch for the, between the, between the um, continuous. It's a good thing this thing is built like a tank, by the way, because with my clumsy, yeah. So see, it's got a manual switch between continuous focus, single focus, and manual focus. And of course I keep it on, on single focus. So, yeah. Lovely, lovely camera. Love it. The E3, you probably know from my other video where I compared it uh, to the M1X. Just one flagship to another to see what it looks like what it behaves like. It's a 10 megapixel camera with a live view, although the live view doesn't work as well as on the E5 here. The live view works really well on this one. And the live view works very well on this camera, which was specifically made for live view. This is the E330. Come on, focus, focus. There we go, see? I love using this camera because the live view is so good. It doesn't have a swivel LCD, just a flip out um, LCD or a tiltable uh, LCD display, but the live view is very, very good. So I still have my macro lens on this camera. I love shooting the camera with this config. The 35 millimeter macro lens on this camera is wonderful. Let me just show you uh, what it looks like. This is a very interesting camera, the E330, because it used a an unusual sensor configuration, or rather the uh, the uh, a viewfinder mirror configuration that flips sideways. Usually on a DSLR, they flip up and down like this, but this one flips like this. Oh, excuse me, like this. 
Uh, so if I turn it on and take a photo, you see how it flips? It's very interesting. I love the sound that it makes too. It's lovely. Just a lovely sound. But yeah, so this is the, the E330. It's very old. Well, not so old, but whoever had it before, I'm not sure what they did to the display. Uh, it still works very well, but it's got this weird film or use on it. Perhaps it just got scratched or maybe they used different chemicals on it to clean it for every once in a while. It just, it looks weird, but it still works. It's fully functional. So yeah, this is the E330. <laughs> but let's get back to the big boys. The, um, I was talking about the E3. So live view on it, not so good, but a tank otherwise. So I have no complaints about it. Yeah. On this one, I believe we get two, two slots. Yes, we do. We get two slots. One of them is for a compact flash card and the other one is for an XD card. XD cards I'm not a big fan of, they're very slow, but uh, as a backup in case I run out of space on the uh, CF card, they'll do. And um, it's got a uh, lovely flip out rotatable LCD. And uh, with live view, but live view not so good, as I said, on it. Um, you have to press the AL, AFL button in order to get it to focus properly. At least that's been my experience. And even then, it doesn't focus fully when you're using the live view focusing. So the E5 really improved uh, in that respect. This one also has a uh, pop-up flash. So it's got a, a, a bulge here at the top for it. And um, yeah, here's the side of it. It's got a few ports here. It's got a, excuse me, a DC in, which is lovely to have. And it's actually got less ports than the E1, you see. Come on, focus. There we go, see? Did away with a firewire port, just has a USB and an analog video out. And that's that. So, yeah, let's activate the shutter on this just to show you what it sounds like. Here we go. Yeah. And turn it off. It does have image stabilization. There we go, now it got focused. So it does have image stabilization and it's got sensor cleaning as well, which is something that the E1 did not have. Well, it has uh, the sensor cleaning, if I'm not mistaken. It does not have image stabilization. They hadn't introduced that feature back then. Um, but remember, Olympus were the first to market with sensor cleaning and with image stabilization of the sensor. Three axes and then five axes. Let's look at the E5. So, really wonderful camera, same design as the E3 but much better in terms of uh, live view, uh, fully matured in that respect. And uh, better colors a little bit in the color science than the E3. Um, I have to say uh, it was a struggle for Olympus and I think for a lot of the camera manufacturers when they had to switch from CCD sensors, which is what they have in the E1, which produce wonderful, wonderful colors, but at high ISO, you get a ton of noise. They switched to CMOS sensors, hoping to do away with some of the noise and also because it allowed them to do live view and other things. 
but CMOS sensors, uh, it's just a, another ball game in terms of color science. And it took them a while to get it right. I, I have to say now in the current lineup of Olympus cameras, the colors are mwah, perfect. But it just it took them a while to get uh, to get over that hump when they switched to CMOS. And so the E5, yeah, it uh, has the pop-out flash, of course, which adds to the uh, bulge here at the top. Uh, same layout as the uh, E3. Now the useful, the much more useful thing for when it comes to uh, cards on the E5, of course, is because it has now a slot, an SD card slot and a CF card slot, which I think is the best possible combination because the CF card offers you backward compatibility. It just allows you to use older cards and that SD card slot is what cameras are using nowadays. So it's just, it's beautiful, really. It's where it needs to be. And um, that's the back of the camera. It has, of course, this nice honking bit, L uh, big LCD display with live view that works a lot better than on the E3. It works perfectly. It's fully matured technology by now, you see. Um, a few of the buttons have different, uh, are, are, are set up differently on the E5. And then here on the side, you've got a few more ports. Yeah, the rubber here, the rubber thing that holds it came off. So it's okay, not a biggie. And what you've got here is, let's see, you've got a mic input for the first time. Uh, you've got a nice big HDMI output. You've got USB. And I believe, oh, AV out. Okay, so audio video, analog audio video out, and the DC in. So neat, neat. There we go. And that's the front of it. Let's let you hear the sensor. go. When you put the E1 and the E5 side by side, you can see that the E5 is bigger. It's also a bit wider as well. You can see that the design is also a bit different. In the E1, you can see that they also emphasized um, the back grip a little more and then in the E5, and I'll show you. Here's what I mean. Take the E5 and take the E1. You can see that this area is thicker here in the E1 than in the E5. And I'll show it to you even more from the side. Here we go. You see how this is just bulkier and actually fits better in the hand. It fits better right there. That's where you're holding it and it just fits a lot better. So you can you can see it a little better if I hold the cameras this way. Look how much thicker this is here than the E5. And I can tell you that this feels better in the hand. So yeah. Oh, excuse me. Let's have a look at the back of the camera as well. You can see, let's put them a little further away like this. Here's where the differences really come into play. You can see that the E1 has a ton more space for grip um, on it. It still has a ton of buttons, but it just has a lot more space for grip. And that's because the display is very tiny. It's tiny compared to the, to the E5. 
But believe me, when you hold the camera in your hand, you really appreciate the extra grip. You've got space here for your fingers. You got space there for your fingers. You got space here for the fingers, which the E5 just doesn't have. They still have that indentation there, but there's no rubber on it. This one has it. And uh, I really do like the design of the E1. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And it's out of these older cameras, all three of them, I prefer using the E1, it just feels better in the hand. Now there's no denying the extra capabilities of the E5, there's no denying the, the swivel display is a lot better and you can just use, find different angles, more interesting angles to take your photos with this way, obviously. But there's something to be said about this beautiful, beautiful camera. They really took their time with the design of it. Okay, let's rotate them a little more. I'll show them to you from the side as well, from this angle. Let me take the E3 out of the back. So quite neat. Now the extra bump on the top of the E5, quite possibly because they really wanted to include a pop-up flash, which the E1 does not have, of course. But still, it is uh, quite a lot bigger. And um, It's interesting that the camera, the, the battery bay is accessed from the back of the camera here, but it's accessed from the side, from the side on the E1. Let's have a look at this side as well. If you look, you can see how this also curves this way, depth-wise, whereas on the E5 it's a lot flatter going that way. Can you see it? And again, when you hold the vertical grip on the E1, you can really appreciate that. I do wish some of these design cues hadn't been lost during the, the, the redesign process. That is, a, that is a pity. They were trying to simplify, perhaps. Now, I would also say that I like this design cue right here. I do like this curve in the E5. They don't have that on the E1. The extra grip here does help for those of you who like to cradle the camera in your hand like this when you shoot vertically, and I do like to do that. Hmm. Another thing that's perhaps a little better on the E5 is this grip right here. It really helps. It's not as pronounced on the E1. Although I have to say, when you use the E1, it's just the overall feel of the camera is a lot better. I just, uh, so you don't, you don't necessarily miss it. Perhaps it's just a design particular that is helpful to the E5, but not necessarily to the E1. Let's bring them to the front again. Lovely capable cameras, all of them really. But I, out of all three, I do love the E1 a lot more. So I've got the E1 here and uh, I'm gonna stick the vertical grip back onto it. And this is it. And it's so nice and simple. I love it. And I also love that each one of the vertical grips has an integrated uh, space here where you can stick the battery door, the door to the battery compartment for the camera to store it in there uh, so it does not fall out. Very neat. So I'm going to stick this back onto the camera. There we go. 
tightening from here. There. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely grip. I just absolutely love it. Vertically is also very good. You can see now how much it, how useful this little indentation here with the uh, rubberized indentation is, it, it, how useful it is to rest your thumb on it when you're shooting vertically, you see. And uh, you really do get to appreciate the extra rubber here as you shoot with the camera. And it's a little thinner here. Uh, it's a little less bulky than the, uh, the vertical grip for the uh, E3 and the E5. And I like it a little thinner. And the EM1X is also a little thinner here, which is very useful. You don't want this to be too big uh, when you're holding it like this. And of course, you can see my fat fingers there. I mean, it's just, I just, I kind of fill up the grip of the camera with my fingers. Uh, yeah. So this is why I, I appreciate good grip on a camera, because it's, uh, if you're going to be using bulky lenses, as I talked about in the video where I compared the, the Pen F to the EM1X, if you're going to be using bulky lenses, you really do want a good grip on the camera, because the heavier the lens is, the more of a grip you need to have. You, you cannot be using big lenses on a camera with no grip. It just doesn't work. And I see people forcing it to work and then they run into issues where the rubber grip comes off because they keep putting undue pressure on certain spots. So don't, don't force a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, yeah, lovely, lovely camera, great grip. And I realized I didn't show you the sound that it makes, a shutter sound. It's, it's really a lot lovelier than the sound on the E3 and the E5. So lovely just lovely and with the lens on it offers the the right amount of dampening and uh, yeah now it it thinks it has to expose for the darkness from the camera for the uh, lens cap but it doesn't obviously it does not have to do that just lovely love it love it so glad i got it and and even though i said it in this video before i'll say it again um you really don't notice that it only gives you five megapixels when you use it because the photos come out so great. They're just uh, a joy to look at. Yeah, you wish you could zoom in a little more, pixel people a little more, but hey, if you want more resolution, what you do is you shoot with like, a, you shoot at a higher focal length and you shoot a panorama that you stitch together in Photoshop afterwards and then you get as much as resolution as you want, so yeah. There you go. Now, the E3, I don't have a vertical grip for it, and that's fine. It's still a wonderful camera. You, I do wish there was a little more grip here for my pinky, but it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. It's a great camera. I'm so glad I got it. And I wanted to get it ever since 2007 when it came out, but I just I was in a different camera system, invested in a bunch of other lenses. And I just didn't get around to it until recently. I think it was last year or the year before that that I got it. I can't remember. So, yeah, and it's still very, very usable even today. 10 megapixels is plenty, really. Uh, as long as you expose the photo correctly, you can use a lower ISO if you need to. You know, if you don't like the noise, I kind of like the little noise. And it's a great camera and it's built like a tank. Uh, now, the E5, uh, let me stick the vertical grip on it, because I took it off, so I'm going to, this is the vertical grip for it, and this is interchangeable, as I said before, you can stick this grip on the E3, even though it's a newer model grip that came out for the E5, it's still compatible with, um, focus on my face, you silly camera, it's still compatible with, um, with E3. So this one takes two batteries and you stick them in there like that. Close it and then you stick it into the camera like this. T 
time that wheel and boom you've got it a solid tank camera yeah it's definitely bulkier than the e1 and the vertical grip as i said it's a little thicker here in the meat which is something i don't particularly enjoy i do like i do like it a little thinner here and the m1 is thinner here which is nice the m1x sorry the m1x which is nice um but still great camera i love like i said before that uh, it's got this rotatable display with a fully mature live view so you can compose photos from all kinds of different angles just get really up close to flowers and just get different points of view on landscapes and stuff it's beautiful beautiful now on a serious note for those of you who still think that chemtrails are a conspiracy i went out shooting with this camera during a snowfall and i'm going to hope now that the camera can focus on can focus on this stuff here let's see focus 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 there we go do you see the salts that accumulated there those were in the snow and honestly i go out shooting in nature all the time i've never had this heavy accumulation on the camera afterwards whatever crap was sprayed into the air accumulated crystallized on the camera you can see it here as well i'm going to try to focus it on there i'm not sure if it's showing up you see crystals white crystals or whitish crystals they also accumulated on the little speaker holes here i'm not sure if they'll be visible come on focus 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 see the whitish substance there by the speaker holes right there right there again crystals from the, whatever nasty stuff was in the atmosphere when the snow fell down you can also see it here You see the nasty white stuff there? I left this on the camera so I could show it to you. But this is, I don't know what that stuff is. I'm not sure that I want to know. Uh, although I can guess. There's so many websites that talk about this shit. Um, here, it's on these buttons here as well. Have a look. I think it'll probably show up. Let's see here. Look at them. You see the nasty white stuff that's right there around the buttons? Because it snowed on the camera as I was shooting. And, and then the stuff crystallized on there. And I couldn't believe when I got home and the camera dried, seeing all this muck on there from whatever was in the air when the snow fell down. It's not right that this stuff should happen. It's disgusting. It's criminal, really, because we're being lied to. We're being told that there's nothing. We're not spraying. There's nothing there no but then you see it and you can't deny the visual evidence <sighs> okay back to cameras now um yeah wonderful camera love it love it love shooting with it I'm glad i got it um and of course let me show you the e330 one more time so it's got the 35 millimeter macro lens on it just just lovely lovely camera it makes a beautiful sound here let me just this is a macro lens so it's it takes its time shooting but here the shutter sound i love that whoo swoosh sound that it makes when it when it when it uh, takes a photo it's because of that unique uh configuration of the uh of the um mirror the flip mirror so yeah, lovely little camera. I love shooting macro photos with this in the garden. Just lovely. And it uses the same, the same battery as the E3. And you can, this, this, you can actually use this in the E5 as well. So it's just great. Just great. Anyhow, this has been a look at uh, 
the DS, uh, the, the flagships, the Evolt flagships. I hope you've enjoyed it. I do love shooting them. I'm glad I got them. And uh, yeah, the E1, I love it best, even though it only has five megapixels of resolution, but it's such, such a neat little camera. You can, I don't know why it is that uh, the first ones are the most endearing, the, the first ones to come out, you know? Uh, just like the EM1X now. I love the EM1X when I reviewed it, and I plan to get it, but we have other priorities right now, or else I'd be holding it here in my hand right now, but um, I do plan to get it. I don't know how the new uh, flagship, whenever that gets launched, will look and how it'll feel. It'll probably have greater resolution and a lot more capabilities, but I do love the M1X. So, anyhow, yeah, thanks for watching. Go out there, take beautiful photos, and uh, don't worry too much about the newer gear because you can get great photos with old gear. This camera is from 2003. Look at my photo stream and see the photos that I've been taking with it. In just the past two weeks. All right, thanks for watching, bye.